Patriots have enjoyed an almost impossible amount of success over the last 18 years. Since the 2001 NFL season, the Pats have gone 2864 during the regular season. 2864. They've won 16 AFC East titles, played in 13 AFC Championship games, including the last eight in a row, appeared in nine Super Bowls, including four of the last five, won five championships. This, this is just, I mean, it's insane. It really is. And whether you love the Patriots or you hate the Patriots, and chances are you hate them, you have to admit this might be the greatest dynasty in the history of pro sports. And yeah, the Celtics won 11 titles in the span of 13 seasons. Sure, the Yankees won eight World Series in the span of 12 seasons, but those teams were from different eras and not to mention different sports. They built their dynasties long before things like free agency and salary caps started making it difficult to keep winning teams together. The only other comparison you could possibly make to this Patriots team is the San Francisco 49ers dynasty that ran from 1981 to 1998, an 18-year stretch during which they too won five Super Bowls. However, the Niners only appeared in 10 NFC Championship games during their stretch, winning only five. And they went one and done four times. Again, the Pats have reached 13 AFC Championship games and won nine. And they went one and done in the playoffs just twice. People like to say, oh, the Niners were a perfect five and no in the Super Bowl. And the Pats have lost three times. But guess what? You can't lose championship games. You don't play it. And we can't go giving the 49ers credit because they lost earlier in the playoffs, right? Also, and this is really the most crucial factor when comparing the Pats and Niners dynasties, the NFL didn't introduce the salary cap until 1994, which, not coincidentally, is the last time the San Francisco 49ers won the Super Bowl. The Patriots dynasty was born and has thrived under the salary cap, and that should be impossible. And yet, here we are. So let's address the $64 billion question. How do they do it? Why are the Patriots always winning year after year after year? Even when, especially when everybody writes them off. How do they do it? Despite the fact that they've had just three top 20 draft picks since 2001. How do they do it? With good players leaving every single year via free agency. Please explain it to me. A lot of football fans will tell you the Patriots win so much because they cheat. And yeah, the Patriots do have a history of bending the rules. They just got caught. There's the whole Spygate thing where they supposedly videotaped the St. Louis Rams practices ahead of Super Bowl 37 back in 2002. And who could forget Deflategate where Tom Brady supposedly deflated his balls prior to the AFC Championship game in 2015. However, while these scandals make it fun to hate the Patriots, it's not why they win all the time. Of course, the most obvious answer to the question, why do the Patriots win so much, is that they have the greatest quarterback in the history of the National Football League one Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Clearly Tom Brady is a huge reason for the New England Patriots success. He's an all-time great, but, oh yeah, there's a but. Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, and Brett Favre all have more career passing yards. Manning and Brees have more career touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, and Brees have better career passer ratings. 12 guys have better career completion percentages. Tom Brady isn't first in any major statistical category. That's not to say Brady isn't the GOAT. He definitely is. <laughs> the point here is that when you really look at the actual stats, he's not that different from other great quarterbacks. If Tom Brady were the main reason for the Patriots dynasty by the same logic, wouldn't guys like Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, and Drew Brees have more than one ring? Wouldn't Peyton Manning have more than two? Look at it this way. In 2018, Matt Ryan had 4,924 yards, 35 touchdowns, and just seven interceptions. His passer rating was 108.1, good for fourth in the league. Tom Brady had 600 fewer yards, six fewer touchdowns, and five more interceptions. His passer rating was 97.97, good for 12th in the league. Ryan had a better completion percentage, more yards per attempt, and more yards per completion. The Falcons went 7-9. The Patriots went 11-5. The quarterback is the most important player on the football team, but he doesn't win games all by himself. Over the years, the Patriots have proved they can win without Brady. In 2008, when Brady missed the entire season with a torn ACL, Matt Castle, who appeared in just 14 NFL games and started zero, stepped in and led the Pats to an 11-5 record. They didn't make the playoffs that year, but that was just a fluke. The following year, when Brady returned, the Pats went 10-6 and, and did make the playoffs. In 2018, the Pats won 11 games and made the Super Bowl. The Patriots thrived without Brady again in 2016. 
Brady missed the first four games of that season while serving a suspension for a supposed role in the aforementioned Deflategate scam. Everybody thought the Pats were screwed. Instead, they went 3-1 with Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett. Obviously, that's not a huge sample size for what the Patriots can do without Tom Brady, but it's more than enough to suggest that the key to the Patriots' success is bigger than Brady. So what's the real reason for New England's ongoing success? It's the team culture, and that team culture begins and ends with Bill Belichick. Period. Don't believe it? Well, come on. Let's break it down. Bill Belichick's coaching philosophy, which is the Patriots' organizational philosophy, sometimes called the Patriots' way, can be broken down into four fundamental tenets. Number one, team over individual. Number two, character over talent. Number three, adaptability. And number four, preparation. Everything they do better than everyone else can be placed into one or more of these categories, which are all interconnected. We'll start at the beginning. The most basic idea that permeates the Patriots organization and guides everything they do is their team first philosophy. Every NFL team preaches a team first mentality. Every team says, this is a team sport, and personal stats should come second to team success. But no one team enforces this mentality and builds their team around it like the New England Patriots. For the Patriots, having a team first philosophy means having an undying passion for football. You've got to love what you're doing, Bill Belichick explained back in 2016. I'm fortunate. I have a great job that definitely beats working. If you like football, you like to come in, work on football, then the New England Patriots is a great place to be. If you don't, if it's a job, if you'd rather be doing something else, then honestly, you'd be better off with another team. I think it starts there. It's love of the game, passion for the game, passion to be a part of a team, be a part of a group, part of a commitment to perform at a high level and be unselfish and give up part of your own personal goals and desires for the good of the team, for the opportunity to be part of something special in a team environment, end quote. The Patriots place a huge emphasis on team building i.e. doing things that helps guys get to know and care about one another. And while Bill Belichick often comes off as a total hard ass who doesn't care about anybody, that's not actually the case. The dude legitimately cares about his people. There are a lot of things that affect what happens on the field that occur off the field. Belichick explained to CNBC in 2017. Players have wives and girlfriends and they have babies and they have personal situations. They have parents that are sick. All of it runs in together, Belichick explained. The more you and the organization can help take care of personal situations, the smoother the ship runs on the football. So how do the Patriots enforce their team first philosophy? They do it by prioritizing character over talent. And hey, would you look at that? That's the second fundamental tenet of Belichick's football philosophy. Every NFL team says they want to instill a team first mentality amongst players. But in the end, they all make concessions for talent, not the Patriots. With the Patriots, character always comes first. Prior to the 2018 NFL Draft, Belichick told reporters that he didn't understand the idea that teams would draft based on areas of need. I think it's important to take good players, Belichick said. That statement was probably confusing to a lot of people since the Patriots never get high picks and often trade down in the draft to stockpile late round picks. How is that going after the best players? But you have to pay close attention to the words Belichick uses. He didn't say he goes after the most talented players. He said he goes after good players. To Belichick, there's way more to being good than talent. What he realizes, and what, for some reason, so many other teams have failed to realize, is that at the highest level, almost all players are talented. But not all players have the team mentality, the passion for football, the willingness to commit to an idea, to the idea of the team. Belichick and the Patriots have come up with a comprehensive screening system that effectively evaluates whether a player is the right fit for their team whether players are willing to buy into their grueling but ultimately rewarding team culture. And because nobody else evaluates players like this, the Patriots can find high character guys anywhere in the draft, which is why they're perfectly content to stock up on late round picks. And by stocking up on late round picks, they also increase the likelihood of finding diamonds in the rough. Superstars nobody saw coming. Guys like Gronk and Edelman, and of course Brady, who were second, seventh, and sixth round picks respectively. The Patriots' character over talent or fit over talent philosophy doesn't end at the draft, though. It affects their personnel decisions at every level. Superstar player wants a raise? Nope. Sorry, they can go get their money elsewhere. Superstar player wants more playing time? Nope. Sorry, they can go get more playing time elsewhere. Look at all the players the Patriots have either let go or traded over the last two decades. Jamie Collins, 
Pro Bowl linebacker, Randy Moss, Hall of Fame receiver, Lawyer Malloy, four-time Pro Bowl safety, Richard Seymour, seven-time Pro Bowler, and five-time All-Pro defensive lineman, Ty Law, five-time Pro Bowl cornerback. Hell, look at all the players the Patriots were willing to lose in 2018 alone. Pats lost starting left tackle Nate Solder, star receiver Danny Amendola, Super Bowl 49 hero Malcolm Butler, and number one running back Deion Lewis to free agents. No other team can handle a loss of talent like that. The Patriots just plug in the next guy and go right back to the Super Bowl. It's not magic or luck, it's their system. Over the last 18 years, there has only been one untouchable player in New England, Tom Brady. But if it were up to Belichick, even Brady probably would have been let go in favor of Jimmy Garoppolo if team owner Robert Kraft hadn't put his foot down. So we've covered team over individual and character over talent. Now let's talk about adaptability. This is absolutely a key concept for the New England Patriots. You can see adaptability at the macro level in the way the Patriots are always one step ahead of everyone else, in the way they zig when everybody else sags. In the early 2000s, every team wanted a big time running back like LaDainian Tomlinson or Marshall Falk. The Patriots instead built a pass heavy offense around Tom Brady. By the end of the decade, when everybody else started doing what the Patriots were doing, they started placing increased emphasis on defensive backs and pass rushers, like Brandon Merriweather and Patrick Chung. Starting in 2010, the Patriots were utilizing a two tight end scheme successfully, deploying Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. A few years later, everybody started copying that, and the Patriots moved on again. Today, the NFL's most potent offenses are led by 5,000 yard gunslingers, guys like Pat Mahomes in Kansas City. But that, of course, is what the Patriots looked like circa 2011. What was Belichick doing in 2018? He's dominating the clock with a workmanlike rushing game. Of course, the Patriots don't even have a superstar running back. There's no Todd Gurley or Ezekiel Elliott or Saquon Barkley in New England. Their number one guy, Sonny Michel, was 15th in rushing yards in 2018. But the Patriots were third in rushing attempts. And as a result, they were second in time of possession and total offensive plays which is how they control games. That's adaptability. You also see adaptability in the Patriots on the micro level. It's what makes Belichick the best in-game tactician in the league. But don't take it from me, take it from other NFL coaching greats. Here's Bill Parcells explaining Belichick's genius to USA Today. Quote, I think one of Bill's great strengths is to take what he has momentarily, figure out who he's playing against, and then devise something that gives his team the best chance to be successful against the opponent. That week and that moment, his system is flexible." End quote. Here's Tony Dungeon. Quote, he's the best adjustment coach in football in adjusting to the strength of his players and masking the weaknesses of their team. If you're a blitzing team, he's gonna come up with things to take away the blitz. If we're playing them, he's not gonna let Marvin Harrison have a 200 yard day. You know that, but you don't know how. End quote. So how does Belichick make his team ready to adapt at a moment's notice to any circumstance a game throws at him? Well, that brings us to the fourth tenet of the Patriot way, preparation. To achieve maximum adaptability, you have to be prepared for every possible scenario. And the New England Patriots are, game in and game out, the most prepared team in the NFL, mentally and physically. Here's an example. It comes to us from a brilliant article by Kevin Clark of The Ring. It's about the way the Patriots run. At the end of almost every single practice, Bill Belichick makes the entire team do sprints up a hill near the team's practice field in Foxborough. He's not trying to be a jerk. He's not trying to test their will and see who's a good fit for the team, although the runs probably do that too. No, Bill Belichick makes the team run because he wants to make sure they can out-hustle their opponents in the dying minutes of the game. He wants to make sure that when an opponent is tired and worn out and sloppy, that his team can find another gear. So the team runs after practice, when they're already exhausted, and they don't think they can play another minute. The fourth quarter is exactly what we're thinking about when we're running. Pat's strength and conditioning coach Moses Cabrera explained to the ringers. And the Patriots don't just do any kind of running, they practice the exact kinds of running they might encounter in a game. I'm talking every possible scenario, like they practice sprinting down the field for a kickoff, but then they pretend there was a flag on the play. So they all walk back, line up five yards back and sprint down the field again. Guys who have played for other teams say no one trains for specific game scenarios like the Patriots. As the ringers Kevin Clark suggests, perhaps this is why the Patriots are the kings of comebacks. Over the last 18 seasons, AKA the Brady and Belichick era, the Pats have engineered 
four double-digit fourth-quarter comebacks in the postseason, the most famous being their epic comeback against the Falcons in Super Bowl 51. He's in! Patriots win the Super Bowl! No other quarterback in history has done this more than once. But this gets us back where we started. Usually Brady gets the credit for these comebacks. But is that fair? Brady was obviously outstanding during these comebacks. Like we said at the outset, he's probably the greatest quarterback of all time. But he wasn't the only guy out there on the field during those comebacks. Everybody had to do their part. Everybody had to be prepared. Everybody had to adapt to the situations. Everybody had to be 100% committed to winning, not just Brady. The same can be said for the Patriots' success as a whole. They win because they do every little thing better than every other team. And the person who makes that happen is Bill Belichick.